Okay. Good afternoon from Bangladesh. Thank you all for finding time and visiting today's webinar on transition from traditional to outcome-based education, College Down, which is organized by Institutional Quality Assurance Cell, East West University, Bangladesh. I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all presented here. I'm Dr. Farhana Fedosi, Associate Professor and Chair, Department of Business Administration, East West University, your today's host. It is a matter of immense pleasure and great honor that today, Dr. Deepu Moni MP, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Education, the People's Republic of Bangladesh, is present in this great occasion as the chief guest. Honorable Minister, Dr. Deepu Moni MP, has a great personality and served as the Foreign Minister of Bangladesh from 2009 to 2013. She studied at Johns Hopkins University, School of Public Health, and at the University of London. Our program has also been graced by an eminent educationist, Professor Dr. Kadi Shahidullah, Chairman, University Grants Commission of Bangladesh. He also served as a Vice Chancellor of the National University of Bangladesh from 2009 to 2013. He has an illustrious teaching and research career. We also have Professor Dr. Mohammad Farashuddin, Chief Advisor and Founder Vice Chancellor, East West University. Dr. Farashuddin is a Bangladesh economist who served as the seventh governor of Bangladesh Bank, the Central Bank of Bangladesh. He was also the director of Bangladesh Civil Service Commission. And finally, we have with us Professor Dr. M. M. Shahidul Hassan, Vice Chancellor, East West University. He was the former professor of the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. He has great contribution in the field of semiconductor devices and higher education. Distinguished guests and respected participants, the aim of education is to prepare learners for life in society for performing tasks. It is the intention of the outcome-based approach to focus as much as on the process of learning and the final outcome or result as on the knowledge and skill. In this inaugural session, we are eagerly waiting to hear from our today's guest. So now I'm requesting Professor M. M. Shahidullah Hassan, Vice Chancellor, East West University, Bangladesh, for the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Honorable Minister of Education, the People's Republic of Bangladesh, Dr. Deepu Muni MP, is here to grace this inaugural ceremony as the chief guest. Let me say, we are honored by your presence at this event. Your presence is an important acknowledgement and recognition for the initiative of East West University in hosting this webinar symposium on higher education. To distinguished personalities, special guest, Professor Dr. Kazi Shohidullah, Chairman, University Grants Commission of Bangladesh, and Program Chair, Professor Dr. Mohammad Farasuddin, Chief Advisor and Founder Vice Chancellor of East West University are present here. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend this event. Respected members of Board of Trustees, East West University invited scholars, speakers of the sessions invited guests from home and abroad, East West University faculty members and officers, government officials, educationists, policy makers, and media people. Good afternoon to all of you. It's a great pleasure for me to be here at this inaugural ceremony of a two-day webinar symposium on higher education. <clears throat> As the socio economic condition of a country changes over time, so do the changes at higher education. Look at this. This in the university which set out to educate the clergy in the ninth century has undergone many changes in the course of the 21st century. The purpose has changed from an elitist philosophy to an egalitarian one. The Germany Humboldtian Research University became a global model in the late 19th century, spreading from Europe to the USA. In recent years, 
a reverse policy, policy of reforms from basic research to apply and entrepreneurial research has taken place. Knowledge-based economy has become a large component of all economic act activity in most developed countries. In this process of developing new knowledge economy growth model, the university has emerged as an important source of production of graduates with high level skills, subject knowledge acquisition, critical thinking capability, and innovative quality and applied research and institutional structure for entrepreneurship and the use of knowledge. The ICT industry in Bangladesh has started to grow in recent years. Should Bangladesh choose the path of knowledge economy at this early stage of the growth of the IT sector? I am not an economist, not even a policy maker. I would like to leave this to them. And as Vice Chancellor, I do believe that the ability of a country to grow and prosper will depend critically on the ability of their universities and university system to set their role to respond to the economic development strategy. This symposium will provide us an opportunity to hear talks of distinguished professors and researchers from the USA, the UK, Ireland, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates on teaching, learning, assessment, and other practices in higher education in those countries. I would like to extend my thanks to Dr. A.K. Namul Hawk, professor of our East Coast University, who will join as a great speaker uh, of one of the tomorrow's session. Wish this symposium a great success. I thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, sir, for your speech. Thank you for those enlightened words and your support to the symposium. Now, I would like to request our special guest, Professor Dr. Kaji Shahidullah, Chairman, University Grants Commission of Bangladesh. Sir, are you here, sir? Sir, can you hear us? Sir, unhe sir, we jail the link. I say unar office rak jhon dukhe porse na kun sir dukhe porse na. Oh, maybe then, uh, then maybe he will join later. Yes, it is better to. Arana, continue, please. Okay. So well, so dear participants and viewers, uh, we understand. We all are eagerly waiting to hear from the chief guest of this webinar. It is my honor to welcome Dr. Deepamoni MP, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Education, the People's Republic of Bangladesh, to deliver her speech as the chief as guest. The chief. Good afternoon. Uh, dear special guests, program chairs, speakers, invited guests, and participants. I'm delighted to be here at this inaugural ceremony of a two-day symposium, transition from traditional to outcome-based education, call of the hour. In today's world, graduates are making significant contributions to the economic development of their country. But these graduates need to be creative, they need to be highly skilled, flexible, innovative, able to think critically, uh, and having entrepreneurial skills. Universities can play uh, an important role in creating such graduates. Universities can set their goals by redesigning teaching and learning methods and designing their curricula that incorporate stakeholder feedback. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Bangladesh is a success story. We are a country with great potential and immense possibilities. Under the dynamic leadership of our Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, the daughter of the greatest Bangali of all times, the father of the Bangali nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, our government is on track to achieve the status of a middle-income country very soon and aim to become a developed country by 2041. 
we cannot be a real middle income country if a large if a large proportion of our young people do not get proper education and if they lack required skills and if we do not forge a path towards creating a knowledge based economy and society then the country will not become a developed country by 2041 and without meeting the 17 sustainable development goals bangladesh cannot be recognized uh, as a developed country immediately after our independence in 1971 bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman had formed the kudrati khuda education commission in 1972 muhammad kudrati khuda a renowned academic and a scientist led that commission we are committed to bring change to our nation and to our people but we all know that change does not come easily there are tension and resistance to new ideas and systems in the education sector our government led by our prime minister we are committed to provide access to quality education for all bangladeshi youth and children in an equitable manner our government has made many changes in education system there were only uh, six universities in bangladesh at the time of independence in 1971 uh, and all in the public sector now uh, uh, we have more than 150 uh, universities and more than 100 are in the private sector and i think we have uh, also the total enrollment at the universities has surpassed 4 million uh, already we have achieved remarkable progress in bringing almost all the children to school the gross secondary school enrollment rate for boys and girls has also increased significantly the dropout rate at the uh, primary schools and junior secondary has also declined our educational plan which is based on improving the quality of education highlights the importance of instilling a sense of citizenship in students who will contribute to the realization of a knowledge society and take part in sustainable development programs and will be able to turn their education life into a real preparatory stage for the future we cannot embark on this journey without the help of academic institutions and academics developing human resources and and endowing them with financial and economic knowledge and skills is one of the essential functions of modern educational curricula to create an educational environment conducive to students interaction with professors of other countries is also very important i have come to know that the main objective of this two day program is to open the door for knowing teaching and learning and curricular development at various universities around the world um i would like to thank the vice chancellor Uh, director of uh, IQAC faculty members and the management of the university in particular professor dr uh, mohammad farashuddin said mansoor ilahi and other members of the board of trustees of east west university for taking uh, such an initiative uh, i urge east west university and indeed all tertiary institutions in the country to take the call Uh, to both applied and fundamental research seriously and also find innovative and effective ways of linking up with the industry uh, the corporate world and academics uh, in universities abroad to engage in quality strategic research targeted at finding practical solutions to real life problems in our society and thereby actualize research findings to develop our uh, society you see there are um, we are making huge progress no question about that but uh, we also have to um, look at the realities that we are faced with now and all the challenges that lie ahead uh, the there is a mismatch or a gap uh, between the skills and the knowledge of our graduates and the expectations um, and the needs of the industry we have to minimize this gap we have to get rid of this mismatch and in order to do that we need to have industry academia coordination and um we have we have to achieve our demographic dividend and education is the greatest tool to achieve that 
we have to achieve our SDGs and education lies, SDG 4 lies at the heart of all the other 16 SDGs. If we achieve SDG 4, I believe that we can achieve the rest um, easily. Uh, we have fourth industrial revolution um, and coming up and there are challenges and we have to um, we have to face these challenges boldly. We have to be prepared for it. We missed out on all the uh, previous uh, industrial revolutions, but we cannot miss on this one. So we have to get ourselves prepared uh, to um, be a partner in this, to be beneficiaries of this uh, industrial revolution and to be participants, successful participants in this industrial revolution. We also have our vision 2041 um, for a developed country and, and also Delta Plan 2100. And in order to achieve all these goals, in order to, achieve, in order to um, face all these challenges, we uh, need to look at our education sector and make the changes wherever uh, the needs are. And I think the biggest thing now is uh, to enable our children, enable our learners to learn how to learn. And if they know how to learn, then uh, there can be lifelong learning. And because the world is changing so fast, the pace is so fast that Whatever they're learning today, somebody getting a degree from a very good university today um, may not be able to use what he has learned today uh, in the next four or five years. So much of it may become redundant. So what does he do? Does he come back to do another degree? Uh, is it possible to come back to your campus all the time to uh, reskill yourself, upskill yourself, um, that's not going to happen so easily. So uh, for, in order to ensure uh, lifelong learning, in order to create an environment for lifelong learning, uh, we need to uh, go into modular education. Um, and thanks to COVID-19, um, I mean, this is, this is a huge global crisis, but still, um, this crisis has also um, given us some opportunities, created some opportunities for us. Uh, like in our education system, we didn't have blended education. We didn't have um, this long distance, distance education, or we didn't have this online education. But now uh, because of COVID, now we have it. And once um, we have it, we don't want to get rid of it. We don't think that once the COVID is over, um, whenever it is, and we hope that it will be soon, uh, rather than sooner, rather than later. But I don't think that online education will go away uh, from our universities, from our education system. I believe that it will uh, stay and we will have blended education and that will enable our graduates who have already, uh, who are already in their working places and they need to reskill themselves, they want to upskill themselves, they can utilize uh, this online education uh, for that purpose. Um, we are focusing a lot on um, technical and vocational education as well. Um, we are also um, focusing on experiential learning. Uh, community engagement, and uh, not just knowledge. We want our graduates to become not just good citizens of Bangladesh, but we want them to grow as, um, as world citizens. And in order to do that, it's not enough to just have knowledge. They must have the skills, and uh, skills not in only uh, in, in specific subjects, but, but also the soft skills, uh, the emotional skills, the social skills, and, and at the same time, the right kind of attitude. And a combination of all these uh, will enable them uh, to lead 
a better life, not just for themselves, but create a better future for the world. And um, the values that we want them um, to acquire, uh, to practice, um, I think these are important aspects of any education system. So we know that uh, the world is changing very fast and we need to transform our education in just one generation. So we have to do a lot in a very um, limited time frame, And that is why it is so important that we focus on research, we focus on innovation, and um, we exchange our ideas with, with our friends uh, all over the world and we learn from each other and uh, we, we don't always need to reinvent the wheel. Um, somebody is doing it better somewhere. We need to just learn to talk to them and exchange our ideas, our views with them. And I think today's event, uh, these two days event is, is actually aimed uh, at doing exactly that. So I, I am really grateful to East West University uh, for taking this initiative. Uh, I'm told that nine professors from the USA, UK, Ireland, um, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and the United Arab Emirates uh, and, and Bangladesh will present their papers on higher education. They are all very well known for their research activities. Um, I, I thank everyone for taking their time out um, of their very busy schedule. I wish this, uh, wish this symposium um, a grand success. And uh, I believe that um, you will reach your objectives um, uh, through, through, this, uh, through this effort. Um, for um, all the participants, um, my best wishes. And I thank the university for giving me this opportunity uh, to be a part of this um, wonderful event. I thank all of you. Uh, joy Bangla, joy Bangubandhu. Long live Bangladesh. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, Dr. Dipamuni MP, for your valuable and delightful deliberation. Uh, due to diffi uh, technical difficulties, uh, our special guest, Professor Dr. Kazi Shahidullah, Chairman, University Grants Commission of Bangladesh, couldn't join on time. So now I'm requesting Professor Dr. Kazi Shahidullah to deliver his speech. Sir. Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me, everybody. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Oh, okay. Uh, the program chair for today's symposium, Dr. Mohammad Farashuddin, Chief Advisor, East West University. The chief guest, our Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Dipumoni MP, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of East West University, Professor Shahzul Hassan, all distinguished participants, good afternoon. I start off with my apologies because uh, I'm, not, I'm not very much used to uh, this uh, online and all these things, so I was having difficulties in getting into this program. I did start trying five minutes to four, but it was 4.15 by the time I managed to. But this also shows that we are learning, I'm adapting. I'm also learning even at this age. So life is a learning process. The, what I would like to start off by saying is that I immediate, when I was approached, I instantly agreed to join this program because the the title, I think, is very much uh, needed, very apt, transition from traditional to outcome-based education. And uh, I thought I could share some of my own experiences, uh, which will be relevant to the theme of this symposium. When we were growing up, we were growing up, always we were told about our tradition. Tradition was a key, key things in our life at every stage. And those of you who are used to watching Hindi uh, serials, you will see even now they constantly harp on what they say is parampara and, and all that, which is li linking us to tradition. 
but times have changed so we have we are uh, in some ways we are a kind of bridge because i can see the change that is coming in our country something which was not there before uh, when i was growing up people would be very hesitant even to come to dhaka uh, from the uh, districts they would need a lot of coaxing to convince somebody to come to dhaka they wouldn't come to dhaka to work they would be quite happy in their own world and uh, it would be uh, but today the scenario is quite different today two years back i went to for a visit to iceland and i found bangladesh is working there so bangladesh is are on the move everywhere when we went to study there was hardly any bangladeshi when i went to study in canada in 1977 today there are maybe a few lakhs i think in canada and australia so our our uh, this new generation they are on the move new opportunities are coming up new ways of thinking is also uh, all around us so now we know that skill based education career oriented education as opposed to only education for education that uh, is now uh, the uh, i think the predominant thing on, on the mind of most students now most students now expect their education to prepare them for the workplace not just education for education i remember when we were growing up the girls who were studying there were not too many they were studying not to enter the workforce they were studying only to uh, get a degree and then get married but not enter the workforce but today it's a different scenario 50% of our students are now uh, girls and i think uh, in many areas they are outdoing the boys and they are very much in the workforce as well so any student who is passing out today they are concerned about their career and their job opportunities not only within the country but outside the country as well because we have a large number of uh, students who are pursuing higher studies throughout the world and they also need to have a background which will suit them to the changing world so it is essential for our universities to understand the changing needs of the modern world and to adapt to make sure that education uh, it does not lose its relevance and it is tied to employability as well so we have to the university administrators have to seriously think about it that course contents curriculum all of these need to be updated redesigned teachers also have to be updated as well and uh, so uh, and and uh, we have to prepare our students uh, accordingly i think that this seminar this symposium is is very much needed today we are we are now struggling i would use the word struggling because we are now struggling to improve the quality of our education here uh, uh some times back our main thrust was on expanding education or making education accessible to all today accessibility is not an issue at all today quality is the issue so today we need our uh, curriculums to be updated our teacher quality has to be has to improve they also uh, need to be updated with what is happening all over the world and overall we have to present an education which will which will of course our uh, our thinking of tradition will always be there tradition is not going to go away we will of course we also need the uh, we have to strike a balance between theory and practice so we do have to do the theory bit as well with a focus on the practical side as well so i would wish this uh, symposium I, i i i have also seen i've gone through the the document that was sent to me and i can clearly see that there are some very important uh, and very distinguished speakers from abroad who are participating along with our uh, scholars from inside the country i'm sure there there will be very interactive uh, sessions and i am sure the outcome will be very positive we need we need now the, it is uh, the call of the hour has correctly been uh, pointed out that it is time 
to be more focused on outcome. We want results. We just don't want to go through a process where we don't have any satisfactory result at the end. So I wish total success for this uh, symposium. I thank East West for inviting me to participate. And uh, I apologize once again for not being able to get into the program on, on time due to my lack of knowledge about all this. And online education, a little bit I would like to say is that online education is, uh, is very much on. Our uh, students and uh, the university authorities, some were initially reluctant, but now everybody realizes that online uh, education uh, has to be taken up. The Honorable Minister has, currently, has correctly pointed out that online will stay with us even when things normalize. UGC has been working towards that end, and I'm sure from the news uh, that has been coming out, you have noticed that we are, we are giving loans to public university students for buying the devices. And we have recently worked out with GP and uh, um, uh, packages for students and teachers, which includes private universities as well. So we think that this will also boost online education. There will be more student participation in the coming days. So I, I, I seek your cooperation in making uh, online education as well as practically uh, oriented education uh, in the coming days to, uh, as well. Thank you very much. Once again, uh, uh, I thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Good luck thank to you. all. Thank you very much, Professor, for your thought-provoking speech and kind words. Now, I would like to request the program chair, Professor Dr. Mohammed Farashuddin, Chief Advisor and Founder Vice Chancellor, East West University, to say a few words for us. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Farhana Ferdowsi, the anchor, uh, the very effective, graceful anchor of the program. I also thank Dr. Barman, Director of IQSC, and the program coordinator. Honorable Minister, Dr. Deepu Muni, Member of Parliament, who is the guardian of 50 million members of the academia in Bangladesh, and a very effective leader and guardian at that. I have the privilege, I had the privilege of sharing the same platform with her yesterday about this time. And Honorable Minister, from your statement, we get that we have to prepare our uh, graduates on outcome-based education, I'll come to that a little later. The special guest, my friend, Chair UGC, Dr. Kazi Shahidullah, Professor M.M. M. Shahidul Hassan, Vice Chancellor of East West University, other senior faculty members, uh, those who are attending from the other institution in Bangladesh, including Accreditation Council, and close to 300 participants from Bangladesh plus eight other countries. Greetings from Dhaka, welcome. We are most delighted that East West University has been able to organize this webinar seminar to inculcate the spirit of assurance of quality. Now, in our language, there is a proverb called Falong Purichoyote. It simply means you are known, anything is known by the kind of final product it is. So our education will reach its full fruition when our graduates are have expertise on not only the challenges and knowledge of the world, but also are totally relevant to the needs of Bangladesh. Why do we need it? Because as the minister said, our effective leader, Jano Bundu Sheikh Hasina, the prime minister, has taken the country to the broad way of economic and 
development and social transformation. It is the quality of our educated people, the scientists, the economists, the engineers, and, and the culturalists, and all the others who will not only sustain this, but also improve upon this so that we can reap the benefit of demographic dividend and can assure the matching of the challenge that has been posed by COVID and would be posed by others. And as we know, each challenge brings about opportunities. And I think we have an opportunity now created and in Bangladesh, thanks to again Sheikh Hasina's 2008 initiative for digital Bangladesh. We are really prepared and in Bangladesh, we are now completing two and a half semesters of online education most effectively. Amongst other things, we have been fortunate to be able to uh, grant laptops to 4% of our total enrolled students. May not be a very big uh, gesture, but we try. Those are the most disadvantaged, those uh, who have complained that they don't have the money to pay the tuition and cannot attend classes because they don't have laptop. These two universities have been able to give 4% uh, of its students laptops on grand basis. I will echo the statement of our special guest. Indeed, in this uh, webinar seminar, we have some outstanding scholars from home and abroad who have brought refreshing ideas, ideas which are uh, which suits the challenges of the time so that we can uh, train our graduates in such a manner that they can interact with anybody in the world on a one-to-one -one basis and can enrich themselves. I would like to also remind that in the year 1972, we had only 30,000 tertiary students. Now we have 4 million students who go to tertiary level education. So we have obtained one Q, the quantity. We need to obtain the other Q, the quality. And it is quite a challenge, uh, but I think we in Bangladesh are quite equal to the challenge with the help of the help and guidance and leadership of the Honorable Education Minister and the guidance of the uh, UGC and Accreditation Council, we will acquire this skill. I would, I cannot resist the temptation of making, make, making a two remarks, which I have done to the Accreditation Council. I think evolving or generating national standards is the topmost priority in Bangladesh. We need to have national standards so that we, that acts as a comparator for all of us, all client universities, to compare ourselves with the national standards, number one. Number two, we must have the critical need of developing self-assessment skills objectively. If we can inspire, in fact, force at times, all the universities and all the program giving schools and institutions as to how to objectively do self-assessment on the basis of the national standards already developed, I think we have gone a long way. At East West University, we have some outstanding educators uh, who have evolved, who have worked on quality education. And as the Honorable Chair of UGC would remember, uh, last time when there was a peer review of quality, uh, seven of our East West University departments have been evaluated by the external evaluators, and we got one outstanding, five very good, and one good, nothing below good. And we hope with the webinar today and with the encouragement of the statements and appreciation of our work, we will be doing even better tomorrow. Before I conclude, we are now going through the time of the centenary celebrations of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the greatest Bengali 
and one of the great men of the world. So he would say, in his relaxed mood, mood to us, would say, Shonar Bangla Gorte Huli Refara, Shonar Manush Chai. So he would say that, yes, we are aiming at the golden mango, where there will be no one in hunger, no one without shelter, no one outside the uh, medical education, and no one uh, will be jinguistic, and no one will be uh, parochial. And so, uh, so, so in that dream of a golden Bengal, he said, the only way we can reach that is to have golden boys and girls. And it is the education, the relevance of the education, quality of the education, transition from tradition based to the output based education that will transform our country, our society, and would inspire others to reach the golden gate of golden Bengal through golden boys and girls. I thank you very much for your participation and for the encouragement to East West University. I would be remiss in my uh, present duty if I did not vote, uh, propose a very big vote of thanks to those who have organized this webinar. I feel very proud as one of the uh, participants in this and one of the uh, creators of East West University that we have been doing very well, as stated by the Honorable Minister and the Chair, and we'll continue to do this if we have organizers of this quality at this university. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Chancellor and your team. Thank you very much, Dr. Borman, once again. Uh, so uh, have a good day and be stay safe, well, and away from COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Farashuddin, for your illuminating and informative speech. So dear guests and participants, we are at the end of our inaugural session. Thanks to Honorable Minister, Dr. Deepamoni MP, Professor Dr. Kaji Shahidullah, Professor Dr. Muhammad Farashuddin, and Professor Dr. Shahidul Hassan for gracing this occasion with your valuable time. So your presence is a clear indication of your sincere desire to strengthen the process of transition from age-old tradition to modern approaches of teaching and learning. Thank you, everyone. So within next few minutes, we will start our next session. Stay connected. Thank you. <laughs>